Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, teacher. Oh, yeah. It comes wrong. Wait. All oh, are here. How many are left? Amelia. Who is Amelia? Did I give you homework? Excuse me. Yes. Uh, I think students work, right? Yes, teacher. I know you. Mm. Review, review. Uh, teacher. Yes. I'm like a new student. Oh, are you a new student? Yes, teacher. Oh, yeah. Your name is Amelia. Do you yes, have teacher. a real name? Is that uh, your real name? English uh, name? My, my real name is Lao Ensha. Okay. Nice to meet you, Amelia. Can, can you introduce yourself first? Uh, my name is uh, Lao, and you can call me Amelia also. I am 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Which grade did you finish? Um, I finished um, year seven. Year seven. From which school did you come from? Um, I came from May International School. Oh, May International. Yeah, I know. I know. All right, everybody. Do you have books now? Uh, not yet, sir. So how are you? Uh, wait. I will. I will send the book through Viva. Can you? Can you say hi to me? Amelia. Uh, I'm in like a telegram group too. Telegram, it takes time. Don't you have email? Or yes, I do. Um, I have uh, my email. Should I send my email? Yeah, yeah, sure. I will try. It takes time. Uh, excuse me, please mute. I will send my my phone number. Because email is not that easy. Will you please send your Viber or Telegram invitation? 
Uh, okay, teacher. I will. Uh, I will try to set my telegram. Telegram. If you are Viber, I prefer Viber. Viber is. Oh. Uh, uh, okay, teacher. Because I need to forward. <laughs> I appreciate it. Wait a minute. Check, check. Where is My connection is not that good. It's quite slow. Okay, everybody, I will. I would like to check homework. Homework is uh, students' uh, learner's book. Review units nine and 10. Um, Amelia, we are, we are on page 86. Page 86. You are supposed to open Lana's book, the first one. Can you open it? Okay. Yes, I can. Sure. Hmm. Page number 86. I give homework to the students, so I will check the, I will check homework. We are in, in unit nine and 10. Uh, we have finished unit, unit 10. So review units nine and 10. Two units. Uh, yes, teacher, I expect it. Mm, okay. So number one, label the bridges. Got it? I, I'm going to start from that. Oh, uh, yes, teacher. Okay. So that's who um, that's who um, A. Which bridge is A? Uh, <laughs> Drawbridge. How much? I'll jump by number B. Hmm. I'll jump by. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I I
You have different ideas. Wait a minute. And number A. So, May, what did you put? A. A. Yes. A is drawbridge. How about B? B is footbridge. Bridge. Wait. I didn't see it. Wait, wait. Who are the number C? Uh, number C is footbridge. Yeah, C is footbridge. So B, what did you put? Uh, draw bridge. Okay, yeah, is it number A, Viaduct? Yeah, you could see water. Yeah. So D, how about D? Well, yeah. Uh, cable State Bridge. Uh, when we look at the picture carefully in number B, B is drawbridge because there is a castle and then there is a river. What we know is uh, drawbridge means, uh, you know, the bridge which across the <clears throat> river and then you, you can pull very easily. But in number B, it is it must be drawbridge. Because uh, there are different different pictures and then B is drawbridge. Because the picture is not very clear. But when I see the river and the, the entrance, there is a small one. So B is drawbridge. A is a, we can see water. So it is C footbridge. How about D? D is quite obvious. A suspension bridge. Yes, yeah, suspension bridge. C is the su suspension bridge. How about E? Uh, Aqueduct. Yeah, aqueduct. So A must be biodet. Yeah, A is biodet, aqueduct is E. I will repeat, A, you could see water, so it must be. A must be aqueduct, right? A is aqueduct, B, drawbridge, C, footbridge, D, suspension bridge, and E is fire deck. And number two, let's go to number two. Teacher, I think A is fire deck. Yeah, yeah, I I also think E is biased. Wait, wait. All the pictures of my children. A, A is fire dead. E is aqueduct. Wait, I, I will check again. Number three. Number 
Yes. Yes. A is by a debt. E is a key debt. So A by a debt. B drawbridge. C footbridge. D suspension bridge. Acquitted is E. Next one, number two. Number two, number one, Vanessa. Quickly, quickly. Uh, Home. Home, two. Q. Q, okay, correct. And next, number three, Kevin. Uh, Slenda. Slenda, yes. Yeah. And next, number four, Delita. Um, Spear. Yeah, next, number five, Sinai Has our governor present? Yeah. And next, number six, Sui Tong. Hemisphere. Hemisphere. And seven, Sumi. Uh, square base pyramid. Yeah. Um, and next one, Tashwizi. Uh, Triangular prison. Yeah, and next, number nine. That's the Su Ah, Triangular Pyramid. Yes, Triangular Pyramid. Let's go to number three. Use the prompts to write questions for these answers. Start each one with a proposition. You are given the example, like city, the which, uh, the White House. So you need to start with proposition A. Because of city, right? In which city is the white, white house? It is in Washington, D.C. You need to look at the answer too. And next, number two, Ang Chambai. Uh, on what island uh, is Mount Fuji? On which island? On which island? On which island? Is? Is Mount Fuji. Mm. On which island is Mount Fuji? Correct. Next, number three. Vanessa. Uh, over which river is Tower Bridge? Uh, what is it? S I D U D E D. Number three. Are you doing number three? Yes. Over which river? Uh, Can you repeat? Over which river is Tower Bridge? Oh yeah, okay, correct. Over which river is Tower Bridge? Since I knew, number four. From which city I can see the volcano? Mm -hmm. How this do I pronounce the, it? Wait, this is a question. This is a from question. Which, from which city can I see the volcano? Popo Katipa. Yeah, Popo Katipa. Popo Katipa. Mm. From which city can you, can I see? The volcano. Yeah. All right. And next one, number five, the letter. Uh, from which Italian city did Marco Polo sail in 2071? From which city did Marco Polo? In twelve seventy one. Yes, correct. And next number six. Priya. Uh into which ocean does the Amazon River flow? Into which river? Which ocean does the Amazon River flow? Correct. Now we will go to number four. We write the underlying part of each sentence using the passive by plus noun if you need to say who was doing the action. You, you are supposed to change the passive form 
We couldn't go over the bridge because they were repairing it. So you need to use passive and make it short. It was being repaired. It was being repaired. So let's go to number two. Amelia. Oh, sorry, sorry, Amelia is a new one, so I won't ask now. Uh, touch reason, number two. Uh, we couldn't uh, use the swimming pool because uh, it was it was cleaning. It's worth it, cleaning. It's worth yes. being clean. Did you say? It was being was cleaned. being cleaned. Passive, right? It was being cleaned. And next, number three. On Chambai. Uh, I woke, I woke up because I was being called by someone. Do you need to put someone? Uh, no. If the subject is someone, you don't need to put. So how will you say? Uh, I was being called. I was being called. All right. Next one, Kevin. Number four. Uh. The, the traffic had to go through uh through the town why uh it uh the bridge were being built the bridge oh uh, the bridge was being built yeah the bridge was being built all right then i knew number five you didn't look nervous during the performance, even though I was being watched. You use two different pronouns. Yeah, the first one is you, so you are supposed to use you. Uh, you didn't look nervous during the performance, even though you was being watched. You is followed by blue rubber. You. You were being, being watched. Yeah. You were being watched. Next, number six. See later. Uh, my brother didn't realize that he was being followed by the cat. Didn't realize that. Yes. Didn't realize that he was being followed by the cat. All right. Let's go to number five. Write the amazing words. Amazing words. The first one, Priya. Um, is that a bar of chocolate? Yes, a bar of. Do you talk? Um, a loaf of bread. A loaf of. The next one, Sumi. A piece of cheese. Yes, a piece of. The su A box of eggs. A box of eggs. Any different answer? What did you put? Any different answer for X? A dozen of X. Mm. A dozen of X. Um, a carton. A carton of X. A carton of X. It is also possible. Yeah. In general, we put 12, we put it 12, but we have small, like half the, the pictures, almost a dozen of eggs is possible. A box of eggs possible. Mm. A carton of eggs possible. A carton of eggs, it is also possible. How about next, deleter? 
Oh, yes. Uh, a bag's all right. A, a bag of? Yes. A bag of rice, a pack of, a packet of rice, and also a stack of rice, as is the two. A stack of rice. Stack means bag. And next one, number six. Priya. Uh, number six is a bunch of grapes. A bunch of, yeah, a bunch of grapes. And next seven, so you don't. Um, a box of tissues. Yeah, a box of, a box of tissues. And next, so tap, so me. A jar of pennies. A jar of pennies. All right. How is it? A bottle of water. Yeah, a bottle of water. That's the one, the last one. Huh? A can of cola. Yeah, a can of. So we have finished uh, review. Now I will do course book again. Course book. I think we were doing poem. Am I right? Yes. Page number. Uh, eighty-four. I think we were doing the poetry. Yes. Page 84, right? I let you read the poem and I let you read some some new words in the list. But we haven't checked number three yet. Do we finish number three by the way? No, I don't. No, yes. Okay, so first of all, you need to record the memory where I come from. Page 84. We have to start that again. So, what I want you to do is mm, here. When you analyze a poem, sometimes you need to. You need to know about the poet's biography, the poet's biography too. So you could learn the poet's biography and no need to study by heart, but you should know some, some points here. Tash using, could you please read? Uh, uh, Elizabeth, 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 how to spell it? Lustra. Uh, Brewster's was born in 1922 in the small uh, Lambert town of uh, Chipman. Chipman. Yes, New, New Brunswick, Rick, uh, Canada. Canada. So she, she is a Canadian, right? So you could learn that uh, she is a Canadian. And then what else? Go on. Uh, as a young uh, part what? in a, a port in the 1940s, uh, Elizabeth uh, Brest, uh, Brewster, Brewster. Brewsters wrote in an almost uh, desperate, desperate, uh, attempt. desperate attempt the order of uh, uh, the order the chaos chaos of her own physical psyche 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 most uh, most of Brewsters. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ali uh, brought, poetry was based poetry on... was based on rural and small town rather than uh, an urban and, uh, experience. Urban experienced, and uh, that is worth mainly uh, traditional influence. The black of her the back of the back of her poems uh, centers around trees, oceans, and cabins and childhood. Uh, recollections, recollections, how do you pronounce this? Recol recollections, looming. Yeah, uh, looming, uh, the uh, reader uh, into the uh, state of rustic, rustic, uh, complacency, complacency, yeah, complacency, 
All right. So uh, when you learn about the poet, what you should know is that she is from Canada. So she is a Canadian. And also most of her poem, poems based on rural and small town. So we could learn that she is she comes from a small town or maybe the countryside. All right, because her poems are based on, on rural and small town. Rural means countryside. According to the word rural, it means countryside. And urban is then urban experience. So the difference between urban and rural. Urban means city. So she is she comes from a small town or maybe a countryside. So she doesn't write about the urban experience a lot. So it is quite mainly traditional in form. So that's all. All right, let's go on next. Mm. We will analyze the poem later. First of all, you can learn the summary. Um, I will give you a few minutes to read the to read the poem first. So please look at page 84. Read again. Read the poem quickly. Teacher, my laptop is crashing a little bit. That's why I will draw it back. Yeah, yeah. It is okay. Okay. Amelia, can you read the first verse? Up to line number 11. Read the poem first. Amelia, are you with me? Hello? Amelia, are you with me? Amelia, are you with me? Oh my God. The rest have already finished. Uh, yeah, uh, she right. said yes in fact. And she, she could not turn on the microphone, I think. Yeah, it's possible. 
Okay. So uh, the rest you have already read. I I let her read because she hasn't read it yet. That is why. Okay. So the rest you have already read the poem silently. So let's see the main idea, the summary first. The name you read. The key idea of the poem seems to be that a person's character is always formed at least in part by the place where he or she is born. People mm. are made of places. Yeah, when people it... are made of places. In the first, in the first line, you could see that sentence. According to that, that sentence, it means that, you know, a person's character, the way you live, uh, the way you be behave is related to your birthplace, right? For example, you are from, from Mandalay, for example. So the way you behave and the way you talk show that, shows that you are from Mandalay, all right? So like this, and go on, whenever. Wherever you go in life, you Whenever. will carry with your, your memories and echoes, echo, echoes, echoes of, your echoes bad of place. your bad place. Whether it is a city as in the first stanza or the quiet Canadian countryside where Elizabeth herself was born. Where I come from, people carry wolves in their minds. And suddenly the picture she draws in the second stanza that seemed at first to be idealized, idealized and wonderful. wonderful. Strongly, strongly contrasting strongly with contrasting with the city images in the first images stanza. in the first stanza. Yes. So according to according to this, you know, the way you behave, yeah, it is about that. The way you behave uh, and it, the way you behave will be related with the place where you were born. And next one, we will go to detail later. And next, the second paragraph. That's one read. This, this idea shows us that and this idea shows us that who are who we are is shaped who we are is shaped by where we born where we were born and where we grow up but this is not the end of the shaping, shaping process. process as the first line suggests people are made of place you are places shaped. People are made of places. Okay. You are shaped as much by where you were born and grow up as the place that you go to. You go to after your childhood. And the thing that you experience in other place, places, that's the thing that you see. Mm. The whole summary is about that. People are made of places. The main thing, the main thing is, the main thing is this one. Wherever you go in life, you will carry with your memories and echoes of your bad place. That is, that is the main idea. Wherever you go, you know, even uh, you, you migrate to Singapore, the way you behave. Um, will be quite related to your birthplace. Yeah, it is true, right? This is for summary. So now we will start from stanza one. Stanza one.
stanza one is quite big. Line one, one to three. And what? Can read stanza one? Uh, does this standard deal with the organizing the first place? Pace life, life, of the city. life of the city in the in the city everything is uh precise and control uh everything ran like clockwork yeah wait kevin how do you understand my name the first stanza it deals with the organized and yeah it is organized you know why people lived in the city because the city life is quite organized Right, uh, according to the infrastructure, you, yeah, it is organized. But fast-paced life, Kevin, how do you understand my fast-paced life? Uh, you know, life is quite uh, hasty. People are always busy. You have to do things quickly. Life is not that. Uh, how should I say, peaceful when you live in the city. For example, you live in the countryside, life is peaceful and the, um, your family members, maybe one or two, work and can support the family. But in the city, everybody has to work, right? Because the price of living is quite expensive. So, People have to work, they are in a hurry, they don't they cannot do for the other for their leisure activities, always working. They have to they have to how should I say follow the money. They are trying to get money. That is fast paced, fast paced life of the city. City life is quite quick. It means, you know. Busy, quick, very hasty. It means like that. Everything is precise and controlled. Compared to the villages, yeah, city life is more organized, right? Because we could not throw the rubbish anywhere. We have to throw it into the bin. Because compared to the countryside, it is quite precise. It means exact and it is controlled. It is correct. Everything runs like clockwork. So the uh, poet is say comparing the countryside and the city life, right? You could see that. And everything, everything runs like clockwork. So it means that they are like robots. They, they are always busy. They don't have time to relax, to enjoy their leisure activities, right? That way, that is the main idea for stanza one. So we will go detail line number one, two, three, and that these are the, uh, the most important part of the poem. People are made of places. How do you understand by that? The main thing of the poem. Here, later I will let you read. As the theme suggests, people will never be able to forget their past. So, for example, you were born in another town, but you could not forget that town, your birthplace. All right. Whenever you encounter the situation which is related to your birthplace, you will talk to that person about your birthplace. Oh, when I I live in that place, people did blah 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 like that, right? You you might talk about the experience that you had in that town. So this people will never be able to forget their past. And they carry with them, with them hints of jungles or mountains, a tropic grace or the cool ice of the sea cases. People will never be able to tell where you come from. They carry with their hints of jungles and mountains. And you have already learned the already, already learned the biography of the poet. The poet comes from the small town, right? It is not mentioned exactly. But small town, so he, he are hints of jungles or mountains. So 
in the countryside, there are some mountains, jungles. So, the, uh, you know, the, if you are from the countryside, you, you, you might talk about the, talk about the, the forests or mountains, something like that. A tropic grace or the cool eyes of sea gazers. Tropic, you learn it already. The areas near the equator. So if you are from the, the dry place, you might talk about, for example, uh, from the dry place, you might talk about that place, a tropic grace. The cool eyes of sea gazers. For example, you live near the sea. You live near the sea, near the beach. So you might talk about that place. So the cool eyes, so you, you might say the experience of seeing the beach, which is really cool. So the cool eyes of sea gazers. Gazers means you see, you look at things for a long time, right? So it is for up to sea gazers. Got it? So, um, Kevin, read nine, one, two, three. That is the main idea of that verse. Uh, line one, two, three. The first line, the, the first two lines of the poem, poem summarize the main theme of the poem. But firstly, uh, people are made of places. Uh, mm -hmm. As the theme suggests, uh, people will never be able to forget their past or where they came came from, uh, people always always be able to tell where you come from. The they carry the with them yeah, hints of yeah, hints yeah. of jungles or mountains, a topic grace or the cool eyes of sea cases. Cases, so cases, cases. Case. It comes from case. So when you are asked, like, uh, what is the meaning of people? are made of places. The key point is that one for this one. So you must be able to say that it suggests that people will never be able to forget their past or you can say where they came from. It means their birthplace. People will never be able to forget their birth birthplace. That is the main idea. And you can explain more for the second one. Supposing if you come from the, the place where, where there are some jungles, mean jungles mean forests or mountains or the place where it is near the, the, the equator. So it, it is that I mean. It means the from the hot place or the place where you live, uh, as the place mm, where it is near, near the sea. All right. You could repeat the experience of your, your birthplaces. Experience of the people's birthplaces. It is also correct. So here actually the contrast, you could see the contrast. Line one, two, three is, the main thing is that uh, people will never be forget their birthplace. That is the main idea. Uh, hints of jungles or mountains, a tropic grace or the cool ends of sea gazers. They are just supporting supporting this phrase. All right, now line three to four. Atmosphere of cities in the in the poem. Atmosphere of cities. How different drops from them, like the smell of smoke or the almost not smell of tulips in the spring. Nature tightly plotted in little squares with a fountain in the center, museum smell. Art also tightly plotted with a guidebook or the smell of work. Glue batteries maybe, chromium plated offices, smell of subways crowded at rush hours. Up to that, it is about the city, you know, urban, urban life. So the, in this poem, the, in this stanza, in this verse, the poet is um, saying both, uh, both sides about, this, about the urban 
life as well as rural life. Up to the third line, it is about the rural, about the rural place, right? Uh, now, line three to four, only only line three to four, right? You could see comma and the, the next part is quite long. The end of the end of the sentence is at rush hours. So atmosphere of cities, how different drops from them. Uh, then I knew line three and four. Line three and four. Atmosphere mm. of cities are different dwarfs from them. The order is trying to show that the atmosphere of the place you live in can affect the way that you live throughout the year yeah. as nature mm. progresses to to its seasons, atmospherically, city life changed greatly. Mm. Atmosphere, right? The way you speak, the way you behave. So it is, at, it is related to the atmosphere of the place you live. So it means that the atmosphere of the place you live in can affect the way that you live, can affect the way that you live. That is the point. This one. That is the main idea. All right. So this is for the first line, and I will go to next. Line four and five. Jaleta, can you read for four and five? Yes, a line four and five. Um, like the smells of smoke or the almost not smell of tulips in the springs, smoke telling us about the typical winter day with a density, density. Yes, densities of the air being greater and the water vapor lining outside. The almost not smell of tulips in the spring, this told us how the flowers of springs are starting to bloom. Blossoms, Blossom. 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 not yeah. fully produced and grown. The smells of the tulips cannot be yet be, oh, sorry cannot yet be appreciated fully. And with the combined smells of the cities, one could think that they are smelling the tulip. One actually, the city's life prevents the sense of tulips to the high degree. Hmm. Like the smell of smoke. Smoke. You know the meaning of smoke. The air pollution produced by smoke, by smoke, gases, and chemicals. In the city, you know, the, you, uh, there is air pollution. According to the word smoke, the, the poet means that there is air pollution, right? So smoke means air pollution. So almost not smell of tulips in the spring. So it means the poet might have the experience, the, the experience of smelling tulips in her native town. But in the city, he, he cannot have that kind of experience because of the smoke, right? Telling us about a typical winter day with density of the air being greater and the water vapor blinding our sight. So the air is not very clear, it means not, not very clean. The almost not smell of tulips in the spring. So the poet cannot get the good smell of the tulip in the spring. So it, mean, it means in, in the spring, uh, tulips blossom, you can learn here, right? According to the according to the words, starting to blossom in spring. Instead, you know, the smell of the city, the smell of the smoke, 
can be small. So people have people can smell the smoke, not not the tulips. Right? This is for line number four and five. And next one, line six, seven, for the uh, read six, seven. Uh, the, the one that you shown in the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nine, the, six, and seven. The idea yes. of the city being organized and tidily planned out is introduced in these lines. Nature tidily plotted in little squares with a fountain in the center, telling us that within the city life, nature still exists in public parks, which have been plotted around the city in small areas to provide the, um, the assurance of sanity within the community, that mm -hmm. nature still exists within the city environment, but is uh, scarce yeah. and nature cannot go about its business how intended to because the interruptions of city life and pollution. Mm. Okay, so line number six and seven nature tightly plotted in little squares. Each word nature, yeah, you could you could see the nature, but. As it is in urban area, tightly it is organized, right? It is planned. City, city life is quite organized, it means. And you could see a little where the fountain in the center of the town, in the park. Yeah, mostly fountain is in the park, right? It means that the city life is quite uh, organized that it is controlled by the rules, right? And that, you know, that nature is quite, the nature exists, but it is quite scarce, not a lot, all right? The nature stays, exists, but it's scarce. Why? Why? Because of the interruptions of city life and pollution. Yeah. In the previous line, you could see the word smog. So it means that because of the interruption of pollution and the city life. So these are the key words. For line number six and seven. Okay, up to in the center. So it is, you could learn about the fountain there. So there, there is a list of the things that you can, you can, you can see in the city. So the first tensor is not finished yet. Seven, eight. Seven and eight. You could see like museum smell. Art also tightly plotted with a guidebook. Um, so Yitong, could you please read line seven, eight. Um, museum small art also tightly plotted with a guidebook. This compares the tightly plotted countryside to tightly plotted art in an art museum with a guidebook. The guidebook can be a metaphor for life. Metaphor. Inside. Metaphor. metaphor. Metaphor for life. for life, we're trying to control everything to guide ourselves through life instead of taking one step at a time. Mm. Yeah, in that paragraph, uh, in that line, you could see museum smell. So it has a meaning. Museum smell and artwork is tightly plotted with a guidebook. What does it mean? It, it means that or it compares the tightly plotted countryside. 
the tightly plotted countryside. The countryside is planned in, oh, sorry. The tightly plotted countryside to tightly plotted art in an art museum. In, you could see the artworks in the museum and but it is, how should I say? It is created by, created with a guidebook. It cannot, it can be created with a guidebook according to the poem, all right? And it is, it is compared with the tightly plotted countryside. So it is compared with the countryside. So the guidebook is not a real guidebook. It can be a metaphor for life. Metaphor for life. So it means, guidebook means life. Life. So city life. So the tightly plotted art might be related with life, the city life. Okay, next, line nine and 10, to me read nine and 10. Uh, uh, the smell of war grew for me, maybe for me and played it off the, off the zoos. The city is full of skies, grabbing office buildings, build of steel and other sharp, precise material to give a uniform look and feel to the atmosphere. Also, we create composing, can create a amount of pollution, which is that is relating to with the smell of work through factories, maybe. Mm. The smell of work, blue factories. What does it mean? Chromium plated offices. It means that the, the city is full of skyscraping office building. Chromium plated offices. Yeah, in the city, there are a lot of offices that we could not see in the countryside. So full of skyscraping means tall buildings. You know, tall buildings. In the city, there are a lot of tall buildings made of steel and the other shape precise materials to give a uniform look. So the, some buildings are quite the same, you know. It is called uniform look, uniform look. And then the buildings are built with steel or some precise materials. So the main thing is about time scrapers. So in the city, uh, the in the city, there are some skyscrapers, it means. And it says like, the smell of work, blue batteries, maybe. So it means, batteries. You are given the word batteries. Battery means pollution. You know, the smoke that comes from the batteries. So it is sort of pollution great amounts of pollution. Which Elizabeth is relating to with the smell of work, glue factories maybe. So it means that, you know, the poet might, might have the experience of working in factories, according to the word. So the word factories means that pollution, the smell of work. So, in city, people have to work hard, right? So according to the words, what we can learn is that the city is full of skyscrapers and batteries related, which is, which, which is um, batteries which are related with pollution and work. So line number 10 and 11. Amelia, can you read now? We, 9, 10, and 11. Smell of subways crowded at rush hours. What does it mean?
Amelia, can you hear me? Amelia, what, what's wrong? When can you talk to me? I want to check. Can you read 9, 10, and 11? What's wrong? Why don't you read? Uh, hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, I can. Can you read line 10 and 11? Uh, okay, teacher. Uh, is it not on time, teacher? 10, 10, 11, only two. We are analyzing the poem. Um, Line 10 to 11. In the end of tender, the smell of subways sounded as fresh flowers. This shows that um, that is caused by overpopulation population of the city. It also shows how uh, rash life in the city is. Also, it shows that the that at the end of the day, no matter where you came from, from uh, or if your walk, uh, chromium, plated office, or blue factories, everyone has the same goal that is to get home. Mm. So here, so according to the word like smell of sm uh, smell of subways, crowded at rush hours. So crowded. It means that there are a lot of oh, people. Crowded, subway crowded. Yeah, crowded means a lot of people, right? Yeah, yeah, you can mute me. So crowded means a lot of people. It shows overpopulation of the city. You know, in the city, it is really crowded. Yeah, yeah. Em Emilia, can you mute? Yes. Because of the, oh, yeah, it, when we analyze each word, Crowded means that uh, the life, city life is quite, um, how should I say, populated, crowded. It means there are a lot of people. It shows the overpopulation, overpopulation of the city. And at rush hours, rush hours, it means busy. So city life is busy. And also here, subways. Subways, so for example, in the morning, people go to work, people commute, right? Using the subway. At the time, they go to the, the same destination, whether you are the officers or just only ordinary workers. You go to the same place, to the city center, to work. Do you understand? And then, in the evening, you, you go back home. Whether you are the officers or the ordinary workers, you have to go back home. So it means that everyone has the same goal and that is to get home. During the rush hour, people are crowded. You, uh, you could know that, you know, in subways, as well as uh, in bus, bus stops, very crowded. Bus stops, very crowded. And so, although there are a few words, it gives a lot of meaning. And people are very crowded. People are a lot, there are a lot of people overpopulated in the city. And the sub, according to the word subways, rush hours, it means maybe the morning time or maybe evening time, people are going to the same destination, whether you are the officers or the ordinary workers, factory workers, it means like that, right? So let's continue now. So we have finished stanza one. And in stanza one, you could learn the contrast between the contrast. Do you know contrast? The contrast between the city life and the countryside, right? Okay, I, I just 
let you analyze the words. Now we will go to stanza two. Stanza two. That's one read. The main idea of stanza two, the whole stanza. Request overview of the whole stanza. Okay, the second stanza is to do an idea change in the book and the focus of the book and now shift mode to country and do a life, do a life. I smell out to that in English. Rooster, rooster means the poet. Which rooster comes as poor at me? Second stanza is more like about the countryside. So according to the word, uh, it is quite similar to the place where Bruza grew up, right? So here, ships rural life, it means countryside, the same. Okay, let's, uh, that's what I'm going to read in line 12 and 13. Where I come from, people carry words in their minds. Where, what is the meaning of words? Acres of fine words. What does it mean? Read. Line 12 and 13. This line provides us with key details in which can, we can relate to Brewster's childhood. Uh, Brewster's childhood. What I can from people carry wood in their life. Okay. Acres of fine wood. Acres of fine wood coming from New France, Canada. Uh, Canada in 80% of for, forest. 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 Uh, forest. Forest. And so the forest of wood will always be in the people's mind as it is the center of the little community. Mm. So here, going to the line 12 and 13, the key details of Brewster's childhood. People carry words in their mind. Carry words in their mind. Acres of five words. It means that, you know, Canada is really forested, a lot of forest. 80% is uh, forest. And words mean forest. So people's minds are quite related to the woods. Their community is related to the woods. That is the main one. And line 14. Line 14. Blueberry patches in the burned, burned out bush. Out of what does it mean? Uh, blueberry patches in the burned out bush. Uh, to the people in the community, this is relatively significant as it is the growing of something new where before there was nothing. Hmm. So in the city, people might think that, oh, it is quite funny. But in that area, it's not funny. The local people just focus on that. It means uh, it's something concerned with the place. It is the growing of something new where before there was nothing. It means Blueberry patches in the burnt out bush. The bush are cleared to grow blueberry. So look, um, the people from the countryside, they are, they are not that greedy, all right? They are not that greedy and their focus is quite limited because they don't have many things to do. So their focus is for that one only. The growing of something new where before there was nothing. Okay, let's continue. Line 15. Vanessa, go on reading. Line 15. 
uh, modern farm houses or in need of pain. This is in a uh, direct contrast. Direct contrast to the first stanza yeah. where everything is new, the attra attractive. attractive. The old, the old farm houses. The old farm houses are the slowly, solely, solely to serve a purpose, to a service a purpose, purpose and pur and purpose the, and to serve a purpose, purpose until they stop. Until they stop serving that that purpose, purpose they were they were. Kept be kept regardless of regardless, regardless of, of law. All right. Wooden farm houses all in need of paint. According to the words, you know, the farm houses are quite old. So in the first stanza, um, offices, you could see the buildings. They are quite organized and new, right? And compared to that, Farmhouses are all and in need of paint. So the difference, the contrast between the buildings in the city and the countryside. You could see that. The old, the old farmhouses are there solely. It means just alone to serve a purpose and until they stop serving that purpose, they will be kept. So although you know farmhouses are small, they are old, although they are old and small, they could do, they could serve, they could serve to the people. You need to regard, uh, you don't you don't need to take in account the look. Looks means you know it is old, it needs paint, so you 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 cannot take in account the old looks that they could do their, their work, farmhouses. So according to line number 15, it is about wooden farmhouses. So you could see the contrast between the buildings in the countryside and the city. Line 16, 17. Oh, sorry, sorry, Kevin, Kevin, 16, 17. Uh, uh, Bruce, Brewster, Brewster portraits, portraits, uh, family life with the ideas of idea of the chickens and hens keep in yard, uh, in generally yard. kept in yard, generally used to provide a source of, a uh, source of food. food in the farms or farm farm of farm of eggs, eggs. farm of eggs or literally speaking, the chicken themselves. Also, the chicken and uh, hand being kept in yard uh, show us that in the country there is, there is the room to spare to be able to keep these chicken and hand. Uh, whereas in conju conjugation, conjunction, 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 with the uh, conjunction with the first stanza, uh, the chicken would not be kept Cap as this. there is no room or uh, there is room nor is there is, is any there need? any need to keep in the chicken and hands hmm. line number 16 17 you could see the word yards so where can you see the yards city life you could not um yards we we don't have space for yard, right, in general. So you could see yards where hens and chickens circle about, talking aimlessly. So here, according to this, uh, the poet wants to portray a farming life with the ideas of chickens. Where can you see the chickens? Only on the farm, all right, in the yards. So you could see that. So according to these words, why why do uh, farmers keep chickens? So it is 
to provide a source of food. Another point that you can learn. To provide a source of food in the form of eggs. You could get eggs, right? And also chickens. Chicken, so it means that you could get meat and eggs. These are the main points here. And another point is that to suckle, um, it says suckle about. So there is space, there is room for the small animals to go around. But in the city, there is no place, right? So that, that is the point too. So according to these lines, what you can learn is that uh, chickens, hens, yard, these are the key points. So if chicken, chickens shows that um, farming life, show, shows the farming life. And in this case, chickens are used to provide a source of food in the form of eggs or meat whatever. And yards, according to the word yards, it means that, you know, the room is uh, for the animals, for the small animals in the countryside, there is enough space to go around. That is the point. And 17, 18, Jaleta, can you read? Uh, yes, line 17 to 18, the is that, or what is that, how to pronounce it? The better, better. Uh, be, better, yes. Um, line 17 to 18, the better school house again plays, uh, emphasize on its beams and old building remaining only for practical purpose and not being replaced by a more attractive building behind which violets grow. Just back up uh, the earlier line of blueberries growing in the burnt, is that about ban out bush? Ban out. Yes, ban out bush. It shows how nature can create a picture of beauty anymore out of anything. Mm. Okay, you could see clucking aimlessly up to that is about chickens. Battered who houses behind which violets grow. But in this case, battered means you could learn the list. All and not in very good condition. The farm, uh, the wooden farm houses, and in the previous sentence, you could learn like um, farm houses all in need of need of paint. So according to these words, uh, farm houses are all not in good in good condition in looks, all right? So yeah, the better schoolhouses, again, places emphasize on it being an old building. An old building remained only for practical purposes. Farmhouses are quite useful for the far farmers. They can keep the things, right? They are, they are crops in that place. So practically it is useful, but uh, regarding the looks, it is quite old and not quite ugly. It is not new like the building in the city. So you, you must be aware of that, that fact. So yeah, battered, the word, the word adjective, but the adjective better means old. So it is the old building are just for practical purposes. So farmhouses, in the farmhouses, you can keep the crops, so they are still useful for practical life. But it, yeah, for, for the poor, it cannot be replaced by an attractive building. Uh, urban life buildings are quite attractive, very nice, but for the poor, it cannot be replaced. Right. And also uh, the, the, the countryside, you could see the wild plants, like the violets, all right, they are growing at the back. It is naturally beautiful. 
behind which violets grow. It means that the early line of blueberries growing in the van, van out bush. So you could visualize the, the nature, right? The beautiful, the bush with beautiful flowers. So that, that is really picturesque, naturally beautiful. And then um, no, no one can create that kind of picture. It means like for it. Actually, it is a noun story. And wait, 9, 18, 19. 9, 18, 19. Priya, can you read 18, 19? Uh, okay, so spring and winter are the mine's uh, shoe seasons. Ice and the breaking of ice, spring and winter are two opposing seasons, and winter could therefore represent the cold city life and spring, the colorful country life. Ice and breaking of ice refers to something in the mind that is broken when one makes the transition from the city to the country. Mm. So line 1819. Spring and winter, the mind's chief season, ice and the breaking of ice. Sorry, I'm on mobile, so I cannot share the screen.
Hello, can uh, yes, we can hear you. Uh -huh. Can you see my share screen? You can all right. No, teacher. No. Wait a minute. I'm trying to come back. I want to finish. Okay, wait, the last part. You have already read about spring and winter, the difference. Now line number 20 and 21. 20 and 21. Uh, so you two, can you read line 20 and 21? A door in the mind blows open. Oh, the a, door, a door in the mind blows open and there blows a frosty wind from fields of snow. The last two lines are puzzling. The door blowing open is just another gateway open in the middle to the memories that she in holds of her childhood. The second half these lines and there blows a frosty wind from fields of snow is there to give a feel to the picture that she has been describing and it gives the reader a cold feeling. The frosty wind from the fields of snow is relevant because in Canada, the winter is very frosty with a lot of snow and rain. Hmm. The last part, a door in the mind blows open and blows a frosty. Frosty means very cold from fields of snow. So it, according to the words, uh, you could learn the weather from Canada. The door blowing open, it's just another gateway opening in the mind to the memories that she holds of her childhood. Whenever the poet sees the windy, cold place, she could remember a uh, bad place because it's quite similar. And the second half, these lines and there blows a frosty wind from fields of snow. So uh, the, the cold wind that comes from the snow can make her feel, can make her remember her birthplace, something like that. So we have finished up to this, we have already analyzed. So I will put this file in group by vow message. I will put this file. You need to learn on your own. And then what I want you to do is, next page, one to four, think for the answer in advance. As it is a poem, the answer may be quite um, a bit different, but the, the main thing must be the same. I want you to take some ideas from this file only. Uh, teacher? Yeah, yeah see. Can you send me a telegram chat? Clue chat. Who is that? Who is that? Uh, Tashuzin. Yeah. Tashuzin, I will try, but I'm not sure. Uh, could you please ask your friend, one of the friends in this class, okay. to send it to, through Telegram because my Telegram doesn't work properly. I have Telegram. Um, but I, when, I, when I upload the file, uh, it cannot be sent easily. That is why. I don't know why. So fiber, it is better. Fiber is better. That is why I send the file to the new students through Bible. It's easier, that is why. 
So anyway, uh, if you cannot see it, you can choose email. Email is also okay, right? So I will try it, but uh, Viva is better. I want you to think ahead for the answers. Page number 85, one to four, and also number four, one to three. Think ahead for the answers. You have already and um, learned the analysis of the poem, so you know about you know the meaning briefly now. So you need to think ahead for the answers. One to five. Don't don't give me the long answer. Just the the main points. Do you understand? Okay, I will stop here. Bye bye. See you. Hi, Jerry.